I was coming from California. They used me. I spoke at 9, I spoke at 11, I spoke at 2, I spoke at 4, I spoke at 6. I spoke Friday night, and then at 7.30, I had a meeting with the elders and deacons. I spoke six or seven times that Sabbath. I had no more strength. I was like a squeezed lemon, tired. When I came from the airport, they took me from the airport right to the church, start speaking. When I finished Saturday night, I had to run to the airport to give the rental car back, and my plane left at 11. Basically, after speaking a million times, get on the plane and fly from California to Atlanta, five hours and a half, wait two hours in the airport, and then fly another one hour or something to Baltimore, and then drive one hour home. I was dead tired. When I got on the plane, I prayed, Lord, please help me nobody to sit on my left or my right. Let this bench be empty so I could rest. And God spoke in my mind, is this prayer for you or for me? I said, well, it's for me, but I'm tired. And the Lord said, who gives you health? Amazing. Every time you go to the doctor, they say, your cholesterol is perfect. Your sugar is perfect. You are healthy. We are amazed. Who gives you health? I said, you. Why do you worry? Shouldn't you put me first and let me worry for you? And then it came in my mind, the prayer from the spiritual prophecy. God called you to serve. Coma. As long as you keep serving, you don't need to defend yourself. Your God will fight for you. Do your job and let God take care of you. I said, Lord, okay, I repent. If you have somebody in great need, put them next to me. As soon as I said that, a big lady sat to my right and a big lady sat to my left and they squeezed me like sardines in the can. I could not move. And I said, Lord, come on. And the lady in my right that was at the window started to cry. She put her head in her palms and... And I said, I said, that's it, you know. The Lord put them next to me because they need a blessing. Can I help you? She says, leave me alone. Okay. And she kept crying. The lady in the next left, she says, how can you help her? I said, well, I don't know. I could pray for her. She says, oh, you believe in prayer? I said, absolutely. She says, me too. And she started to talk about prayer. And I started to talk about prayer. And for half an hour, we talked. And I gave her... How many prayers, in, how many types of prayer, how many prayers in the Bible, how many prayers are answered in the Bible, how many prayers are answered instantly, how many prayers are answered in time. I started to give her information, you know. She said, whoa, how do you know that? I said, nine years and a half of study, 750 prayers, you know, eight of them translated from Hebrew, and many from Greek, and, da, 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 and 111 books read on prayer, and I started to brag like a foolish, you know. Anyway, she says, wow, you do know about, you do believe in prayer. The lady in the right that was crying stopped crying and says, regardless how much you pray, it's not going to change my situation. I said, well, what is your situation? When I got on the plane, I got a text from my husband that he left me with another lady. What can God do about that? But I didn't answer. Because Jesus says in John, I don't speak my own words, but I speak the words that the Father gives me. You remember the verse? If Jesus, that was wise, didn't afford to speak his own words, would we, should we speak our own words? You follow me? Nehemiah, when he went to the king, the king said, what do you want? And Nehemiah said, I didn't answer. First, I prayed for wisdom, and then I answered. So instead of answering to the lady, I said, give me a second. And I prayed in my mind. I said, Lord... I cannot help this lady. Her husband left her. What can I do? Please, you promised those who ask for wisdom, they will receive how much? You remember? Large hand. God is going to give you wisdom. I said, give me wisdom after your promise. I am not asking for self. I am asking to be a blessing for her. God spoke in my mind clearly. I, it's like I was impressed strongly to tell her that she's better off without her husband. I said, lady, I'm going to say something really mean. Please don't slap me. Don't get angry. Just let me finish the sentence. You'll not agree with what I say. She was like, what? I said, listen, I know it's hard for you now, but it's good for you that he left you. She said, what? I'm going through a divorce. What am I going to do? I said, just let me finish. And I said, nobody loved you yesterday and hates you today. People don't just stop instantly loving you. He stopped loving you two, three, four years ago. 
And he started to abuse you and to call you names and scream and beat you and life became hell and your home became hell and you had no more joy and your life was miserable and stress and you could not sleep and you could not eat and he started to cheat on you. And after two, three years of garbage and misery, he finally got the courage to say, I'm gone. You suffer right now. But a month, two months, three months later, you'll get over it. But you'll go home to nobody screaming at you. And you can start life all over again. And this time, start it with God. Because you don't know people, but God knows people. And he's going to give you somebody who will love and respect you. She opened the big mouth. How do you know that three years ago he stopped loving me? Three years ago he started to scream, and he started to take the money, and he started to beat me, and life became exactly the way you say. Are you a prophet? I said, no. <laughs> How do you know that? I said, common sense. I said, I prayed in my mind, and I got, asked God for wisdom. You talk to God. I said, he talks to me. <laughs> and she said, you, you are right. That's what happens. And I know that you are right, that I'm, I'm going to be better off, because I got tired. I, was, I wanted to kill myself. I got tired of it. And she says, but right now, what can I do to take my mind off this? I said, lady, when I have a bad song in my mind, even if I try to get rid of the song, my mind keeps singing the same song until I start singing a better song. You cannot get rid of this misery unless you focus on something better. I got my book from my briefcase. I said, read this book. If you don't like it, give it back. If you like it, keep it. What did I, if I don't like it? I just told you, give it back to me. Read one chapter. It's going to take you a few minutes. Okay. Is it going to help me? Just read it. She read one chapter, two chapters, three chapters. By the time we were in Atlanta, she was giving me hugs, laughing, crying, giving me hugs, laughing, crying, kissing me. I said, enough. Just keep reading. When we got to Atlanta, she said, can I keep it? I said, you like it? Yes, keep it. I'm going to give it to my daughter. I'm going to give it to my neighbors. This is the, I now realize that I should live for God, that I should not fix my eyes on my trouble and my husband, that I should commit my life to God. And then God answers prayers and I could have peace and joy. And oh, thank you, thank you. And she was going on and on and on and on. She was going on. And then she sent me an email a month later. I started to go to church. I started to pray. I started to study. My life turned around. Thank you for that book. God put you next to me. All things work. What if I saw them coming next to me and I would have moved on a bench in the back to be comfortable? Do you follow me? I would have not experienced that miracle. Would I? 